I updated from Foundry version 10 to 11 and everything is working just fine. My games are running smoothly and after running several sessions, I have not run into any problems. I spent months researching, preparing and waiting for the right moment to update to the new major version. So let me share my process with you. This way you can also use my rigorous method to update with minimal issues and you have a safe way to back out of the update if you need to. And hey, even if you are on version 8 or 9, I have some tips for you as well for updating. Also, you'll want to stick around until the end of the video because I'll be showing you how to troubleshoot issues you might have after updating. Hi, it's me, Fondu, your Foundry VTT wizard. I have over 400 hours using Foundry and I want to show you how to get the most out of Foundry VTT. If that sounds like your thing, hit that subscribe button down there and the like button as well. Now it's important to note that my upgrade was from the latest stable release of Foundry version 10 to the the latest stable release of Foundry version 11. If you haven't upgraded to the latest stable release of version 10, I recommend you do that and migrate your worlds to this new release before upgrading to version 11. If however you are still on version 8 or 9 and looking to upgrade to version 11, I highly recommend upgrading one major version at a time. This is because there is a higher chance of things breaking in your game worlds if you jump over one or more major versions, and you will also have a harder time troubleshooting. Don't worry, I'll give you some tools for this purpose in just a second. It's also very important that you go about upgrading your Foundry version in the exact order I describe in this video. Not adhering to this order can lead to broken worlds that cannot be fixed anymore, so please follow along carefully. Oh, and all the resources I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description of the video below. With that out of the way, let me show you how I upgraded from Foundry version 10 to version 11. The first thing we want to do is check for module compatibilities. If there is a module that is absolutely crucial to your games, you want to know beforehand if it will work or not. Unfortunately for going from version 10 to 11, there isn't a great way to do this. There is this script made by Reddit user the Ripper 93 that gives you a list of explicit compatibility, but modules marked in red might still work, but there is no guarantee. A link to the Reddit thread is in the description. It's not perfect, but it will give you an overall idea of module compatibility. If we're going from version 8 to 9, there's a module called Deprecated Modules, that will check for compatibility between the versions. If, on the other hand, we're going from version 9 to 10, we can use a module called Module Compatibility Checker instead to achieve the same result. Both of these modules are community made, so they are not 100% accurate. I know that these tools are imperfect, but the good news is that once Foundry version 11.5 drops, this functionality will be built into Foundry when upgrading from 11.5 to 12 or any future versions. I can't wait for that feature. Now that we've checked for module compatibilities, if there are any critical modules that look like they aren't compatible, here's what we're going to do. We should head on over to the specific modules GitHub page and navigate to the issues tab and check if there are any issues about updated version compatibility. We open that issue and see what people are discussing. Often people here will discuss when support for a newer version is coming or if there is an alternate module out there. You can find a modules GitHub page by clicking the project URL button on a module's foundry page. If this did not give us a solution for the module, then our last resort is to Google the name of the module plus Foundry VTT. This sometimes brings similar alternative modules in the search. However, if none of this gives us a solution for that particular module, it's time to decide whether you can live without the module and upgrade or if you want to keep the module and not upgrade. All right. Now that we're done with the module compatibility check, it's time to back up your data. This is very, very important. We want to do this step before actually upgrading to the new version. Backing up our game worlds means that if after upgrading things are very broken, we can downgrade to the previous major version and restore our game worlds. If we're self-hosting Foundry, we just need to copy the user data folder to another secure location. The user data is usually located inside the local app data slash Foundry VTT on Windows. For more detailed instructions on this, check out the link in the description on how to find it. If we're hosting Foundry on The Forge, we can back up our worlds by going to Game Configuration, then clicking Export Worlds, and finally clicking on Export All. And hey, actually, you can also back up the data inside Foundry itself now since version 1.311, but I'll do a separate video on that new feature. Now that we have backups of all our game worlds, we can move to cleaning up our module list. If you're a Foundry power user like me, chances are that you have a bunch of Foundry modules that you installed thinking, oh, I'm totally going to use this, or I want to check this out, and then never end up using the module actively. 
don't worry, it'll be our little secret. To remedy this, we're going to go to the add-on modules page and go through all of our modules. We will look at each single module in the list, check what it does by either just remembering or checking the modules foundry page for details, and then we will uninstall all the modules that we don't need. Yes, this process will take some time, but trust me, it's worth it. This way you ensure that you don't have any modules in use that are old and might be causing compatibility issues, which causes bugs and performance issues and that our module list is clean. Also, with less modules in our game world, it will be faster to load. Personally, after this process, I uninstalled over 60 modules. I might have a module hoarding problem. Okay, now that we have a clean module list, it's time to use another module to speed up setting up our game worlds once we've upgraded. Forian's copy environment allows us to get a JSON file of each of our game worlds, which contains the game world settings, users, and active modules. To get this environment copy, with the module activated, go to each of your game worlds, navigate to the game settings tab in the top right corner, right click under where it says general information at the top, and click export settings. You will have to do this separately for every one of your game worlds. These JSON files will come in handy later when we have updated, so store them in a secure place. Then, we have one more step left before we actually go ahead with the update. Next, we are going to duplicate one of our game worlds to use as a test world once we've upgraded. The idea with this test world is that we can try out migrating to the upgraded version with this world and see if anything is broken. Duplicating a world is not too complicated. If you are a self-hosting foundry, go to where your foundry data folder is. Again, this is usually located in local app data slash foundry VTT on Windows. Go to the data folder and then the world folder pick one of the game world folders and copy it with a new name. If you're hosting Foundry on the Forge, go to Game Configuration, click on Clone World, and then click Clone on the world you want to clone. This process will allow us to use a test world for testing purposes, and then if we downgrade back to the previous version of Foundry, we won't corrupt or lose any data in our main game worlds by migrating back and forth. Yes, I know we have the backups from before, but I found this to be a very useful step. Okay, now the time has come for us to actually update our Foundry version. The exciting moment is here. To update to version 11 of Foundry, the process differs a bit if you are self-hosting or if you are on something like The Forge. For the self-hosted Foundry, we want to go to the Foundry website, log in with our Foundry credentials from the top right, go to our profile by clicking our username on the top right, then we go to purchase licenses, and then we select the latest recommended stable version of 11, release from the download version dropdown, and click download. Once the installation file has downloaded, run it and go through the installation process. If we're hosting Foundry on the Forge, upgrading versions goes as follows. We go to Games Configuration, scroll to the bottom of the page where it says Foundry VTT Server Version, and select the latest Forge recommended version. We should also not forget to click the Save Changes button after selecting the version to apply the upgrade. Now we have updated our Foundry version, but before we jump into our test world, we need to do two things. Namely, update our game systems and modules to version 11 compatible versions. First, we head over to the Game Systems tab and click Update All. Second, we go to the Add-on Modules tab and click Update All. If we don't do this, our game systems and modules will be on the old version 10 compatible versions, which are old, so make sure to do this. All right. Boundary is upgraded and our game systems and modules are up to date. Time to jump into our test world. Go to the Game Worlds tab and jump into the test world we created in the previous step. Foundry is going to ask for us to back up the game before migrating the world, which we can go ahead and do. Once we've backed it up, it's time to migrate. Once migration is done, we jump into the game world. Now by default, Foundry will have disabled all our modules. Normally, you would have to manually turn them on, but this is where Forian's copy environment comes in to help us. Turn on just Forian's copy environment under Game Settings and Manage Modules. Remember to hit Save Module Settings. Once the module is active and the game world has reloaded, head to the Game Settings tab in the top right corner, right click under where it says General Information at the top, and click Import Settings. Now select the JSON file we exported for the world that this game world is a duplicate of. We will be presented with a new screen where you can select which settings you would like to import, but we will be importing all settings so we can just click Import Settings at the bottom. After a while, our Foundry world will reload with all our settings in place and previously active modules activated. What a time saver. Next, we're going to run a round of combat. We're using the D&D 5e game system in this tutorial, but this should work for other systems as well. 
When we're running combat, we should try to do melee weapon attacks, ranged weapon attacks, and spell attacks. After that, we should try rolling ability rolls, skill rolls, saving throws, and using class and racial features. This way we can see if the core features are working as expected. And now we are on Foundry version 11. However, if we bump into any issues during this testing process, note them down because we will be needing it during troubleshooting. As can be expected, upgrading from one major version to the next can introduce some issues. Luckily, there are some ways we can try to troubleshoot them. For troubleshooting, we will use a module called Find the Culprit. This module will allow us to cut down on the time it takes to debug our modules and to, well, find the culprit of the issue. Instead of having to deactivate every single module one by one, Find the Culprit will automate this process for us. Of course, with several modules enabled, it can be hard to know which module is the source of the issue. If you need help locating the broken module, I made a separate video on this very topic which you can find linked in the description below and on the right hand corner of the screen right now. Now, assuming we know which module is causing the issue, we proceed as follows. Firstly, we install and turn on Find the Culprit in our test game world. Once we've activated the module and our world has refreshed, we go to Manage Modules. And there we will see a new button titled Find the Culprit. Clicking this button will open a new window with a list of all our active modules. We should select the module that is causing the issue and press start. Now our world will refresh and all our modules will be deactivated except the one we chose. Check if the issue still persists. If it does, the module will start a process where it activates only half of our previous modules, refreshing our world and then checking if the issue still persists. This process should eventually land us on the culprit of the issue, i.e. the module itself or another module. Don't worry, there will be prompts after every refresh, we just have to follow them. And if we accidentally close a prompt, we can reopen it by manually refreshing our world. Depending on the amount of modules we have, this process could take a while. If and when we find out which module is causing the problem, we should deactivate it for now until a fix has been issued. We should also report the issue to the developer. You can find a guide on how to report a broken module to the developer in the broken modules video I mentioned before. However, if this module is critical for your games and you don't want to deactivate it, then the only options are to live with the issues or to downgrade back to the previous version of Foundry. If we decide to downgrade back to version 10, that can easily be done. On a self-hosted Foundry instance, we do what we did earlier to upgrade. We want to once again go to the Foundry website, log in with our Foundry credentials from the top right, go to our profile by clicking our username on the top right, then we go to purchased licenses, and then we select the latest stable version 10 release from the download version dropdown and click download. Once the installation file is downloaded, run it and go through the installation process. If we are hosting Foundry on The Forge, we go to Games Configuration, scroll to the bottom of the page where it says Foundry VTT Server Version, and select the latest version 10 stable release. We should also not forget to click the Save Changes button after selecting the version to apply the downgrade. After downgrading back to version 10, because we were using that duplicated game world for testing, we can now continue exactly where we left off before with everything working just as it did before upgrading in our our main game worlds. There will be no need to migrate your game world data back to version 10 since it was never migrated to version 11 to begin with. Only the test game world had its data migrated and you can now delete that test world. There you have it. Now hopefully you are on Foundry version 11 and it's running smooth with minimal issues. Let's do a quick summary of all the steps we did. 1. Check for module compatibility to see which modules work with version 11 and which modules you can expect to break. 2. Back up all your game worlds in case something catastrophic happens so you can always restore them back. 3. Go through all your installed modules and see which ones you really need and uninstall the unnecessary ones. 4. Use Forian's copy environment to get a JSON file with your active modules in game world settings so you can later on easily activate all your modules. 5. Create a test game world by duplicating one of your existing ones. Six. Update Foundry to version 11 and then update your game systems and modules. 7. Use your test game world to see if there are any problems after the update. 8. If you have problems, use Find the Culprit to pinpoint the origin of the problems. And 9. As a last resort, you can downgrade back to Foundry version 10. This process of mine should give you a very safe way to test upgrading to a new version of Foundry while not losing or corrupting any of your game world data. So what do you think? Will you be using these steps to upgrade to Foundry version 11? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to read your thoughts there. And while you're down there, I would kindly ask for a like to the video and a subscribe to my channel. These two small things help my videos reach more people, and that would be swell. I also stream every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European time, which is 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash diceandeasy. 
You can find a link to my channel in the description as well. On the screen right now, you're going to see another video of mine where I show you a step-by-step -step guide how to troubleshoot a broken module and how to report bugs to the module developer. Check it out if you need further troubleshooting help. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.